We'd like to welcome everyone to Bite Size PD today. Um, we are going to discuss how to use Sora. My name is Gretchen Zaitsev. I'm the district library specialist, and I'm here with uh, Elaine Zhang. I am the librarian over at Union Middle School. So welcome, Elaine, and thank you for helping us today. Elaine uh, manages our Sora um, collection for the district. So to begin, we'd like to review. Um, we are recording this session for use later, so you can refer back to it at any time. Those of you who are participating in professional development with us today, uh, remember we expect you to be present and participating as we go through the ins and outs of using this ebook and audiobook platform. Please mute your microphone and turn on your camera if you're comfortable. If you have any question, please type it in the chat. I will be managing the chat while Elaine is presenting. Please refer to the multi-tiered system of supports framework um, to see how this content connects with your content areas and can be used in the classroom. Our learning intentions for today are that you will learn how to help your students use Sora to access eBooks and audiobooks, and you'll know you're successful when you can confidently help your students using the Sora platform. Our agenda today um, is indicated on the slides. Uh, we will be, there will be a broad overview of the platform. Uh, then we'll discuss the different types of materials in the platform, eBooks, audiobooks, and I can read all by myself books. These are some of the reasons we love Sora. Um, having uh, an ebook and audio book platform available to every student in the Canyon School District helps with e equitable access to stories and information. Uh, our students have access to these materials 24-7, 365, regardless of whether or not school is in session um, or whether they're um, home ill or traveling. Uh, these materials are always available to them. They are filtered by age appropriateness. So um, a elementary student has access to a digital audio and uh, ebook elementary collection. A middle school student has access to age appropriate materials and a high school student has access to materials across the grade span from K to 12. Ebooks and audiobooks help emerging reading readers by providing multimodal reading experiences. So if you have a student who is struggling with voc vocabulary or content, um, you can have them like read the print version at the same time they're listening. It's also fabulous for students who like to consume media in different forms. So maybe they have the print book, but they also have the ebook of the same title. So if they're traveling, they don't have to carry the book with them. But if they're at home and they want to snuggle in bed um, while they read, uh, maybe they want the print book over the ebook. Sora is great for fast finishers. So students in your classroom who are finishing work ahead of the rest of the majority of the students have an opportunity to engage in quality content and practice their reading and listening skills. Uh, as we mentioned, it's great for emerging readers um, in that um, you'll see in the features, there's a lot of supports for students who are learning how to read. 
Um, it's great for reluctant readers because it does provide those additional supports they may need. And it's great for voracious readers because um, a student can access a book as, um, at the point of need. So they don't have to wait until they have access to a school library or a public library. They can um, just read the next book in that series as soon as they finish the one they're reading now. Oh. So I'm gonna turn the time over to Elaine who's gonna walk us through the platform. All right, I am going to share my screen. Um, here we go. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna actually um, go into Sora and right now I'm logged in. Just remember to log in, you just need your um, district credentials. Once you're logged in, the first place you, you will. So if I'm, if I'm a teacher or a coach, how am I gonna find Sora? Oh, I can log out and start from there. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so sign out. So to get to Sora, just type in the website soraapp.com or just search Sora on Google and you'll see this. And then typically if you've never logged in before, it'll say find my school. Um, you don't want to set up code, just go, um, this is not my school. Under here where it says my school isn't listed, go ahead and click on that and just start typing in Canyon School District. You can actually type in your individual school and it'll still show up Canyon's district, but I find it's faster just to type in your district name. So this is my school. And then again, your username is your district um, login. I'm actually gonna go in as my daughter only because she uses this platform a lot and then I can show you um, just some books she's, you know, just some numbers and stuff that you can use for um, if this is something you want to sign as some type of homework for your students. So I'll log in as her. Okay, so I'm now, give it a second. All right, so I'm in. Typically, the default page is the home page. This is what they're going to see first. And here, whatever they're reading will show up. And they can access that book from here. But I find that if you're introducing this to your students, the best place to go is to start with the Explorer page. So you see these four tabs down here. You want to start with the Explorer page. And this is nice because this is where you can show the students who like to see the covers and who are trying to pick books. They can do it from the covers. There's the um, breakdown of different genre of books that they can select from. If you continue to go down, there are just all kinds of different categories to help entice them to read. So that's really where you want to start with them. And then they have choices. Show them that if they click on any book, that will give them the summary of the book. It will also give them some information about the RI or what we call the Lexile score, interest level. I also like that um, they can read a sample by clicking on read a sample. Um, the add to list simply means they want to add it to a list um, for later access. I also like that if um, they like this book, they can go down and it'll share more titles like it. So this is where a lot of students will say, well, I'm done with this book. I don't know what to read next. So that's a great option. One thing well, I do. Uh -huh. It also looks like that book was in a series. Is that yes. So it will show you are absolutely right. So it will show um, other books in the series, which is super nice because then the student can, um, after they're done with that book, instead of trying to figure out what, where to go next, that it does show the, all of the books in the series. This clock here just means that someone probably has it checked out right now and that there's a hold on it. Okay. Um, all right, so if I go back, one thing I really want to point out when you log in is remember, as an adult, you see the entire collection, high school, middle school, elementary school. So if you're sharing with elementary school, I highly suggest you click on preferences and change your audience to juvenile. What that does is when I apply it, I am only seeing titles for elementary students. 
Okay, so you can see my um, explore page has now changed with different books. Same if I'm in the middle school, I want to change the audience to young adult. Okay, and what that does is now I've, it automatically selects young adult, juvenile, because it middle school has access to both young adult and elementary. And obviously, if you have no preferences set and it's all, then that will take you to high school, middle school, and elementary school. Okay. Um, from here, we're going to go to Shelf. This is this tab right here. And Shelf is really just what you have out. Okay, so you can see right now there's two books out. Um, I can open the book right away. I'm going to hold off doing that, though, because I want to show you options. And the reason I want to show you that is because this tells me that this book is due in seven days. As I get closer to the deadline, um, I want to make sure that if I want to keep it longer, I click on this options to make sure I can renew my book. So that's where I would need to go to renew it. Okay, you can mark it done. You don't have to. And um, if you want to read it offline, um, you know, if you're traveling, whatever, and you have an iPad or a Kindle, you can send it to that device offline. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, Actually, I'm going to show you some other features, and I'll come back to opening a book and show you the different features in a book. Um, if you go to the Me page, this is a really powerful tool. This is really just data on the student's individual reading or maybe your reading. So you can see this is her overall for however many years she's had Sora. This is how many books she's read total, hours, days, and the, st the streak means days in a row, and so forth. Um, what's nice about this is... Um, if you wanted to change the time range, maybe you say to your students, hey, I want you to record your um, silent reading at home or end school for this week. Um, you can custom range that and then change this. So I want you to think about how if you, you know, um, assign homework reading at home, 20 minutes at home at night or classroom sustained reading time, how you can apply this to your students, how you can make this sort of an assignment. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, uh, I'm going to go back now and open up one of these books. All right. Because I want to show you some of the features inside the book. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this book. One thing it does automatically is it takes you straight to the page you last left off so that there is no trying to find it okay um and elaine how would i know when i'm looking at sora in the catalog like if it's an ebook or an audio book so in the catalog an ebook um will not have a headphone on there and i'll show you as i move to an audio book i'll show you but an ebook right away when i open it it's just text there is no reading um, out loud, there's no audio. Whereas an audio book, unfortunately, you do not see the text. It's just a, um, you're just listening. And that's really because there are a lot of people who would like to put it on their cell phone and as they're driving or as they're walking or whatever they're doing, they're just listening to that book. All right. So I have this um, ebook open and you can see I have the text in front of me. If I click to the center of the book, this opens up this at uh, um, this these features it shows what chapter I'm on I can obviously skip ahead down here but really what we're looking at is these up here this just changes the look from single pa double page to single page I can take it back to double page this just lets you play a little bit with your font so if I click on that um, you can say I can increase the size of my font or decrease it depending on, and this is great for children who are maybe visually impaired or need bigger font. Um, I can also change the, um, the, the coloring on the background. So some people might not like the white background. Some people might, some students might need bigger contrast um, and so forth, okay? I'm gonna bring that back here. The other great feature is we've talked about dyslexia and um, students who need fonts in a different way. So this is what's nice about this open dyslexic. If you click on it, you can see it, it spaces the letters out more um, and it really makes it a lot easier for students to kind of access the text. 
All right. Um, but if I want to go back to the original, I'll just click on push Publishers Default, and that will bring me back to the original text. And if I want to exit out of here, I'll just click on this arrow. Oops, hide. Sorry. And that will take me back here. Okay. Um, this micro, uh, uh, microscope, no, this <laughs> magnifying glass uh, just allows you, you to search for a word within the book. All right. I'm going to hide that. And then this is just a way to bookmark that page or look at. And then if you highlight anything, it'll show up here as well. Okay. Um, to, again, close out of the book, go ahead and go over here to close. And it'll close the book and take you back to your shelf page. All right. Um, the next one I want to go to is I want to show you audio books. Um, so I'm going to go back to the Explore page. And audiobooks, and I'm actually going to change my preferences back to um, any so that you guys can see all of the different books that are available. And we can, okay, so I'm going to apply that. All right, so I'm back. Um, you'll know it's an audiobook because it has this headphone. And so these are audiobooks. So you'll notice when I click on it, same thing. It does a great job of summarizing the book, um, reading level, text difficulty. Um, and it has, again, the option to listen to a sample. So I'm going to go ahead and click on listen to a sample. Give it a second. And then if you press play. One. I think it was only at the very end of the Lavender Lodge. Okay, so I'm going to pause it for a minute so I can talk. But you can see she's reading kind of fast. So if I wanted to slow down her speed, and you can do this while you're playing it, but I can change the speed a bit for the student who might need it slower and then for the student who needs a job when we were fighting for our lives in that unholy guest house that i glimpsed lockwood and co working to okay so that is how you change the speed and this is really great for your students who read at different levels or listen at different levels the other nice thing about this is if you go over here to that um, moon you can set a timer for let's say you want to listen for 60 minutes and then have it automatically shut up, shut shut off. So that is a great feature um, for kids who like to listen at night before they go to bed. Or maybe you have a silent reading time and you have some kids who instead of having reading a book, they're listening to a book. That's a great way to say, hey, we're going to set it for 15 minutes for your silent reading time. Okay. Um, and then this again is if you do make any notes or anything in your book right, which we probably won't do too much with an audio book. And then this is bookmarking. But again, with an audio book, it will save your place, right? The last type of book, which I think is one of the uh, really powerful book for students who may need some tech support are what we call the all by myself, the I can read books, right? These actually will show you the text and highlight it as it's reading the book out loud. So you're reading along with the book. So again, you click on the book, it shows the summary, and then it does the reading level, right? But it also, um, we have a, let's do the read sample, okay? So Elaine, why would someone want to use the sample instead of just click borrow? Great question. So one of the reasons we want them to do the sample is um, just like a library hard copy. When someone takes a book, it removes the book availability from another student. And we pay based on number of checkouts. And so a lot of our audio books and our ebooks um, have so many checkouts and once those checkouts are used we have to pay for more checkouts and so if we know we're not going to be using the book we really want you to um, do the sample of your students um, rather than check it out to do um, do it okay i'm not sure why this one's not reading along that is really interesting um i'm I'm going to go to another book because usually when you open it, and this is a great learning experience, uh, usually when you open these books, the I can read all by myself. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. This is my mistake. This is just, these are um, beginner books. Let me go down to, they're called read along books. That's what I screwed up on. Okay. So let me go down um, and show you what are called read along books. Okay. So 
to be, you know, kind of to reiterate what we're watching here, the I can read all by myself books are actually for early learners who are like moving into the chapter book phase. And yes. these read along books, while they may be similar, um, they have additional features than just being an ebook. Yes. And read along with me. There it is. Read along with me. So this you'll see underneath it says books with narration. That's they're called read along with me and they have narration. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these. Okay. And then do the sample. So you can see right away it has that audio icon with the play button. That's how you know you're in a read along. So if I click on it. The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. So this seems really engaging. It Art does. class was over. But Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. So you can see it's reading the words. Um, some of the books actually will highlight the words. I think this one in particular, the text isn't being highlighted, but a lot of these books, it actually highlights the word as it goes along. And it depends on the publisher and how they've set this up. But if that is important to you, make sure you try. That's why it's so important, I think, to try different samples because some of the picture books, like I said, that have the read along feature will highlight the words as it reads. But some of the other features I want to show you is it does the same thing as the audiobook. Um, you have that timer where if it's reading too fast to your student, you can slow it down for them. OK, and so that way they're able to keep up the words and then follow along. Fosti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Yeah, that's a lot slower than it was previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if, again, it has that feature of, you know, just having one page on the side. Um, so then you have um, zooming it in, which I think is great for, again, your students who need that feature. Um, it has the font that we looked at where we can change that, um, the color in the background for students who need that. Um, it, sometimes it'll say not available. And because I think with this particular book it has a unique type of writing to flow with this style of picture book and that's why this one in particular may not have it um, you can still look up a word and so forth so this is the read along um, book and you can find these in the explore page under read along okay um, I think that is everything Gretchen can you I'm going to stop presenting or did is there anything else you wanted me to show Gretchen before I stop presenting um just if you want to click on maybe one of these popular subjects so you know it says like popular subject and then it'll have the subject heading and then it tells you the number of titles that fall under those categories so yeah. um if you have older students who are in this platform and can read that's a great way to find books about a topic that they're interested in. Or you can, you notice that it actually says like young adult nonfiction. So that's um, a whole different genre than the books that we've looked at today. Yeah. And this is great because I find with my students, um, they don't always, they, they know what genre book they like to read, but they don't always know exactly what book they want. So I know that if I have a student who loves sci science fiction, I may say, hey, click on the science fiction tab and see what books are in Sora. Um, and so you can see when I click on science fiction, it goes through and shows you um, there are a lot. And so you can actually narrow down your search. So you can see up here um, in science fiction, it's broken down into audiobooks, ebooks. Um, so maybe I just want the ebook so I can click on that and that will again, narrow your search down. So this is really nice because you're not, and, and maybe your um, younger students may not be ready for this, but definitely I think um, your older students, your middle school students, um, your high school students could really benefit from this because sometimes when they walk into a physical library, I think there are too many choices and whereas this helps them to narrow down their choices. Right. So just to reiterate, 
um, if you're interested in sharing Sora with your students, you can go to soraapp.com and then you're going to uh, look for your school. So we're going to look for Canyons District, the Canyon School District. Yes, Canyon School District. And again, they can search by their school, um, right. you know, and, and it'll just pull up Canyon School District as their default that they're under. Um, so right. that's not going to be too much of a problem. But I, I do think that if ever you do have questions about Sora, um, your uh, field tech at the elementary school and then your um, librarians over at the middle and high school are very well versed in Sora and certainly feel free to reach out to them and ask them. So thank you for to Elaine for giving us a tour of Sora and showing us how to access that for our students and the features that will help our students become the readers we all hope they will become. And for those of you who've participated or viewed this professional development, again, if you have any questions about how to use Sora, reach out to the librarian in the school where you work, um, or you can reach uh, myself at the district office and we'll be happy to assist you and provide additional um, guidance or answer your questions. Have a great evening and thanks for joining us. Okay, let's stop the recording. Oh, okay, great. I was wondering about that. Oh, you know, there is a record button to your left. Oh, no, that's different. That might be just recording me. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, awesome. I did. Um, uh, oh.